Hi, I'm Jake Team with Landmark Implement. Today we're going to be doing maintenance on this S770. Uh, I'm a John Deere Combine Technician out of the Phillipsburg location. I'm Tyler, I'm the Parts Manager for Landmark Implement, Phillipsburg location. Uh, after the maintenance, we're going to go through the lubricants and the greases that uh, he's pointed out in his maintenance video. When you're performing maintenance on this combine, this would be your single point right here. And uh, we recommend that you guys make sure and keep this clean, especially around this area right in here on each one of these. That's where the hydraulic couplers couple. Uh, you don't want to get no contaminants in your hydraulic oil, so you want to wash that off. You want to make sure your electrical connection is clean. We would prefer you use electrical cleaner. Um, it's much easier on the glue and these connectors, and it don't. So that way the connectors will stay in one piece instead of coming apart. When you're in the storage position without your header on, you should have a cap looks like this for your single point. We recommend that you cover them single points and keep them nice and clean. There's, this is your reverser gear case. Uh, there's several different styles of the shivs on the front. Uh, but one thing that on all the reversers to check is the oil level on the reverser. Your dipstick is right here. You can check your oil level there as long and fill it. Uh, this gear case does take special oil. It's a VG 460 oil that this reverser gear case takes. Uh, any S series com any STS combine to an S series combine will take will take that oil. Now on these on these pulleys here, uh, this is what we call the variable shiv pulley. So you can variable your speed of your back shaft. There's some things to check on this. The first thing is, is your belt tension. And when you check that, you want your upper shivs closed all the way together, which is done on the cab on a switch and then runs a hydraulic function. Uh, you want these closed completely together. And then you want to adjust this belt such that you get a quarter inch shiv gap down here like this one will be. Right down in there, you'll want a quarter inch shiv gap there. And that will set the proper tension on this belt. On this outer shiv unit, there is two grease circs. Uh, we'd recommend you put them, the grease circs, at uh, 12 and 2. And you put about 12 pumps of grease in this one and about two pumps of grease, two to four, in this grease circ here. Uh, good way to remember it, 12 and 2. 12 and 2, so that's a good way to remember it. On this unit, since there is a, it is a variable drive feeder house, variable speed, this this drive here, will, it will go in and out. Uh, it is variable speed. So right back in here, and for picture purposes, you'll have to trust me, but it's right back inside this pulley. Uh, there are two grease circs back there, and we recommend that you grease them as well. So this is your real drive motor here. Um, on this unit, on this motor here for the service, there is a grease circ right right down here at the end of my pointer. Uh, we recommend that you grease that grease circ there as well during your maintenance. For this belt, uh, tighten it down to the end of the gauge that's at the end of my magnet. There is the uh, bearing for the feed accelerator. Um, we recommend that you grease that bearing on a daily. So in this area of the machine, there is a few more grease circs to to grease. Uh, this is your fan, your fan bearing right here. There's a grease circ right there. We recommend you to be greasing that one as well. There is one right inside this wheel on this final drive. We recommend that you grease it as well. It greases the outer bearing of the final drive. The inner one runs in oil. On your final drive, it takes 80, 90 oil. Uh, this is the fill location here. Fill through this hole. This is also your level hole here. Uh, older machines, the the older machines, the level was here on the, on the, this S770. They have moved the oil level to the top plug, so you check it and fill it up here on the top plug. And it is 8090 in this gear case. And there is a drain plug down here to drain it if you want to change it. And uh, this final drive is the same as the final drive on the other side. So this is your primary gear case right here uh, because this machine like I said is variable drive variable speed feeder house so it has a primary gear case with electric clutch some things to check on it for maintenance 
is uh, this is your oil dipstick tube here. This gear case takes 80-90. Um, there is between this hub, this pulley, and the gear case, there is a grease circ in there that you will need to grease, and it greases the splines on this shaft. Uh, it'd be the same on all machines. So you'll want to check it for the proper tension. You'll want to use this gauge right here to tighten this chain. Uh, there's a gauge right here that tells you uh, if it's tight or loose or not. So just tighten it to the washer is at the gauge and that'll set the proper tension on this belt here. Moving on down this side of the machine, there is a hydraulic filter located here. So you'll want to change them according to your operator manual to what is recommended so per your machine. This is one of the air filters uh, on this machine right here. Part numbers are usually located on the sticker on the side of the box so it is uh, good to pull them out check them for cleanliness and keep them good and clean so we get proper clean air into the machine. There is a grease circ right here for this for the unloading auger swivel, it's grease, it grease goes through this tube, through the unloading auger swivel, you'll want to grease this as well. So, and please do remember that all these grease points are located on the side of the machine here. So, if you have any questions, here's a quick guide on where all the grease circs will be at on your machine. So, in this area of the machine, there's this grease circ right here, and it's a 400 hour grease circ. Uh, you can grease it more. It does, gre it does grease a bearing for this discharge beater bearing which sits in behind here. Uh, to grease that you do it on this, this grease circ located right here. Uh, on some of your older machines it was located over here. Uh, on this machine they've moved it over here. So You'll want to grease the tie rod which is greasable on the bottom right here is where you'll grease your tie rod joint and it is the same as the other side pivot points here which there's a grease circ here for the top one located right there and there's one on the bottom which is located right there and uh, this is a two-wheel drive machine so a four-wheel drive machine will be located in pretty close to the same area there is a couple things to check while you're up here uh, there's this belt here to check and it that belt tightener is located right here and you'll want to check it to that gauge there for proper tension. There is a belt here. You'll want to check it for the tension and it on, is on a self-adjusting tightener to uh, that tightens that belt. There's also a belt located that drives the discharge beater. And it's located right here. And to tighten th this belt, you do it on this tightener rod here with this gauge. Uh, a little on the side note, all these, all these gauges that you see with the tightener rods, with the springs in this gauge, uh, you tighten them down so where you, if you can see that where the washer is level with the end of the gauge, that is the spec. You'll want to check these belts here. You have to look and see if you want to tighten just one of the belts, you have to look and see which, which tightener you want, whether you want the upper one that does the outer belt or the lower one that does the inner belt, and you adjust them here with the same gauge here or sure the end of the gauge uh, so you'll want to check them there all of your machines will have this grease circ right up there you'll want to grease it it greases a bearing on that shaft you'll want to grease it as well according to your operator's manual there is a when you're in this unit right up here there is a Another hydraulic filter. This is the second hydraulic filter on this machine. You'll want to change that filter there. So, all hydraulic filters are um, 2,000 hours or every two years, whichever comes first. On your drives for your rotor, there is a grease circ located here. So, you'll want to grease that one. And the procedure on it is, is there's a plug on the back side here. And you'll want to take that plug out. And you'll want to grease that grease circ so you have grease coming out of the plug and then put the plug back in. There's a grease circ on the uh, rotor drive, which is down there on the rotor shim. You'll want to grease that one as well, that grease circ there. And it does take corn head grease. There is a dipstick 
down there and that gear case does take 80-90 and the dipstick if you can see the end of my pointer is located right there and you'll want to check that gear case for 80-90 oil and make sure it's at level when you you'll also want to check your rotor drive belt here you'll want you'll want these shivs all the way together so as slow as the rotor will turn and you're looking and you're looking for a six millimeter shiv gap in the bottom of them shivs is what you're looking for when you're adjusting it the procedure to do that is located in the operator's manual if you have any further questions on that there is a belt located here and it drives off the engine drives your jack shaft for your uh, rotary screen and that is the tightener pulley for that belt and it is self-tightening s600 series and the s700 series has a variable fan drive variable speed fan drive which is what this is here uh, it's variable speed there's a grease circle located on that fan drive and it'll be down here is where it's located there is one on the other drive and it's located right there check it takes a uh, hydraulic oil on the engine gear case and you check it with this dipstick located right here keep in, keep reference that right next to the gear case there is a hydraulic filter and I'll show you that later on in the video this is the hydraulic reservoir uh, you'll want to fill you want to check this hydraulic reservoir with the feeder house down and the unload auger swung in you'll want to check it and make sure you have oil on this sight glass here underneath this shield there's more of your engine filters this is your hydraulic filter i said i'd point out later on the video well that's it here so that is the third hydraulic filter on this machine um, change it is the same for the other ones this is your fuel filters here right here's your this is your water separator filter this is your fuel filter this is the engine oil filter this is your engine oil dipstick this engine does take 1540 engine oil this is the oil drain for the engine right here on this petcock and it does drain it down to the side of the machine right here is located the second air filter assembly for this combine um, you would remove this cap here take your filters out clean them put your filters back in or replace the filters as needed uh, they're located right here in this housing here is where you would add your engine coolant you add it here and you check it here and there is a spec located in there for minimum cold and maximum cold this is your fuel fill here for the fuel for this machine it is a steel tank uh, the older models had a poly tank this is your depth tank if your machine has depth tank uh, model year 2016 the newer takes depth you can put the depth in here and over here is located is your depth filters uh, recommended to change them according to the manual on this side of the machine for maintenance we're going to go from the back to the front uh, located here in this area is your electrical fuse panel located right here inside this round cover older models had a uh, square one that was located down here but on the newer models are lo located up here so that is the fuse panel for for this machine any silver boxes you notice on this machine is a control is a controller that uh, will probably take software so any so uh, that is one thing to have us check now and then is the software on your machine um, we do that with our laptop but uh, any silver box you see um, you want to keep them clean so wash them off just keep them nice and clean because them are controllers we recommend when you're going to store this machine for a long period of time that you, uh, you turn the battery shut off off just like that oh it's for the off so that's on there we recommend that uh, if you're doing any real serious maintenance to this machine that you shut it off and padlock this here so uh, nobody would get hurt but that is your 
battery disconnect here. So when it's in the off position, the machine will not start. This is your tailings elevator chain tightener right here. Uh, you'll want to check this tailings elevator chain to make sure it's to the proper tension. To do so, you remove this cover, loosen these four nuts on these flanges, and adjust this up or down as you needed to tighten or loosen the chain for the tailings elevator. Uh, when you're in this area, it is recommended, this is your moisture sensor, it is recommended that you uh, clean the moisture sensor uh, on a timely manner. So you pull these two pins out here uh, and uh, pull this cover off and the little auger assembly will come out of it and you can clean the grain out of it and put it back in there. And we recommend that you keep them nice and clean uh, for storage and uh, especially during bad weather and stuff that you keep those clean so the grain doesn't get wet and swell up in there So and plug that up or it will cause you problems. Like I said, on the other side, here is your sticker for your uh, grease circs, all the grease points on this side of the machine. So uh, if you have any questions or you don't remember, reference these sticker guides and they'll help walk you through it. There is a clean grain elevator drive belt that's located right here. So the tightener for it is right here. So, and it's the same as the tighteners on the other side, just run the washer down to the gauge. This is the tightener here. Uh, the chain is located inside the housing, of course. You loosen the four nuts, and then you adjust these nuts here up or down to uh, tighten or loosen the clean grain elevator chain as needed uh, for your harvesting conditions. This is the tailings drive belt located up here. Uh, to tighten it is the same as a belt tightener on the other side or clean grain, any one I've referenced. Like I said, they all tighten the same. Uh, washer run it down to the end of the gauge or just a little past uh, and that will put the proper tension on this belt. This is the upper tailings auger drive chain right here and located behind this pulley right here is the tightener for it. You loosen it up, just push it up and then that will properly tighten this chain then tighten the nut back down uh, and that's how you tighten that chain there. This is the service the cleaning fan on this side. Uh, there's a few places to service the cleaning fan over here. One, this is the belt. Um, it's variable drive. As long as the springs are good, located on this drive here, uh, this one's pretty well self-tightening as to the speed of your cleaning fan. Now, to take care of the upper drive first here a minute, there is actually some of you might be used to just one grease circle on this shiv, but there is actually two. One of them is located right here to grease one, and the other one is located right up here to grease the other. So there's one and there's two. The grease will appear out here on the end. So that's how you know when you have enough is when you see the grease here. So you want to grease the bearing on this side, and you'll want to do that here on this grease circ. Grease this bearing. Uh, that greases the bearing on the shaft. Uh, the other one is this drive right here that has a grease circ and it is located right there. And you'll want to grease that till you see grease appear over here on this end. There's uh, you know, a lot of moving parts, so safety first, make sure the machine is off. Have the key in your pocket when you're doing any adjusting. Uh, like I say there's a lot of moving components here underneath these shields that I have previously removed. So you want to make sure and uh, just, just keep safety first. So this is the shoe auger and chaffer frame drive belt here that I got my hand on. Uh, this is the tightener for it right here. You tighten this belt here on this tightener, uh, same as all the others, washer down to the gauge. Uh, that puts the proper tightener on this pulley. As you see, there's two more tighteners located here. Uh, this front tightener tightens the uh, primary the front jack shaft belt primary front jack shaft belt it tightens it uh, washer to the end of the gauge this rear one rear tightener washer to the end of the gauge that's the tightener and it tightens the rear jack shaft drive belt is what they call that belt so uh, you want to check and make sure those belts are in good shape up here on the front right corner of the combine for service and maintenance uh, there's some things that we want you to service and maintenance up here 
Uh, one of them is on this on this uh, pulley that drives the shoe auger gear case. If you can see that grease circle on the end of my pointer down there, uh, that is a grease circle. You want to grease it till you have the grease coming out right there where it already is. This is the lever here to uh, your feed accelerator. This belt here is how you tighten it here. It does have a spring tightener located right here. Uh, washer to the end of the gauge as usual. You will want this handle up in the in the field position when you look when you test to see how tight this belt is. So this is your feed accelerator drive pulley located right here. Uh, there's a grease circ down here that greases the feed accelerator bearing on the right side of the machine. You will want to grease that to have grease coming out of this bearing located here. Uh, sometimes the grease circ is hidden, so what we do, um, you loosen this here, and then you can turn this pulley how you need it, grease your bearing accordingly, and then you put this rod, this back up, and that tightens your belt up. This is the feeder house drive chain right here. So there's a grease circ on this clutch here. There's two of them actually. One of them is located right here, and one of them is located right here. They're on opposite sides of each other. You'll want to grease them according to the book but uh, you should see just a little remnants of grease coming out the end of this of this drive here and uh, that's this chain you'll want to check your chain tension and you adjust it on this slide right here so uh, different crop settings you know you will want to uh, bring this chain back to here and then adjust the chain from little sprocket to big sprocket depending on your crop whether you what you're cutting to uh, what how fast do you want the feeder house chain to drive not how fast the feeder house drives but how fast you want the conveyor chain inside this feeder house to drive so uh, but once you get this set here and get it on the right sprocket then you just adjust this chain on this slide right here to get the proper tension so when you are on the conveyor on the feeder house conveyor chain the one inside um, I showed you the tightener rod at the beginning of the video on the other side, and this one does the right side. So there is two tighteners. One I showed at the beginning of the video on the left side. The other one is over here that I showed you uh, just now, and it is on the right side. So you'll want to, and it looks like it's a self-adjuster, but it is not. So you'll want to check that as your chain gets looser. These nuts here in the washers will start creeping out past the end of your gauge, so you'll want to run them back up. So the washer is in line with the end of the gauge. So uh, that is something to check and keep an eye on. So right here, this is when the machine is completely off, battery disconnect disconnected. This is the rock shaft clean out door arm here. So you can open this arm, bring it up, and then you can get in there and clean your rock trap right here. And uh, we do recommend, you know, if it's full and dirty, uh, it's not going to be able to collect any any objects that you might pick up going through the field that would cause damage. So we do recommend that you uh, clean that on a regular basis. So this machine on this S770 today has got the uh, what we call the push button three speed transmission. So uh, it actually has three gears and it does take it is labeled it does take 80 90 gear case oil any any gear case that's that says 80 90 you can also put synthetic in when you change them uh, I would recommend putting the synthetic oil in them makes all your gear cases run cooler in the summer when you're harvesting wheat or or a summer crop of any sort so as long as they are GL 5 equivalent uh, that's that's kind of the main goal there now to check this three-speed transmission, there is a plug located right here, and that is the fill plug and and the check plug. So you take that plug out, oil at the bottom of the plug. You don't need to add any. If you take the plug out and there's no oil located at the end of that plug, then you'll want to fill it to the end of that plug. For that operation, to check a Pro Drive transmission level, we recommend uh, that you start the machine. You run the machine for three to five minutes set your feeder house on the ground swing your unload auger in shut the machine off 
go back check the engine gear case main engine gear case or otherwise known as uh, short term meg and uh, you would check the oil in the meg to make sure that it is level after it is set still for about uh, five to ten minutes then you check it and uh, if it is if it's on the full mark you're good to go and if it needs to be added some then you add it uh, on a pro drive transmission the same oil in the engine gear case is the same oil in the pro drive so as long and the same oil that is in the primary gear case which on a pro drive is the five speed the five speed transmission uh, so there there is some differences in the machines so if you do have any questions don't hesitate to call us about the uh, differences in your machine and uh, we'll help you work out through those those problems I want to talk about some lubricants and grease that you'll use when maintenancing your combine I'm going to start off with uh, your high guard your transmission of hydraulic oil that you're going to use for all your hydraulic systems on the S7 7th com combine um, we recommend the high guard transmission of hydraulic oil you can get this from quartz one gallons two and a halves five gallon buckets 30 55 gallon drums and through our bulk oil program that we have now we're going to talk about some gearbox lubricants we recommend the gl5 is what you want to use for all your gearboxes your transmission your final drives uh, you need to make sure it is a gl5 lubricant and for the not the synthetic but for the regular you'll use the 8090 a TY 6296 is this quartz here. For your summer harvesting, if you're in a, the higher temperatures, you'll want to use the synthetic GL5, which is an 8140. And this bottle here is a TY 26372. The only gearbox that you won't use your GL5 in will be your reverser gearbox. You'll want to use this VG460, which is a TY 26408. Like I said, you'll only use it on your reverser gearboxes. It is recommended that you only use this. We're going to talk about grease. What I have here is a SD polyurea grease, which is a severe duty general purpose grease. It is a TY6341. You can use this anywhere on your machine if you want to. But what we recommend here is a, a TY25744, which is an extreme duty synthetic grease. You want to use this especially during the summertime if you're summer harvesting your wheat in higher temperatures. This will withstand the, the heat a lot better.